Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to create a melee auto attack function. So whenever we stand close to an enemy and we spam, spam some auto attacks, um, we can see them disappear. So we're removing HP and it has a cooldown, all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to start creating our spell book pretty much. So without further ado, let's get started. We will begin by creating ourselves a new folder. This one is going to be called Spell. And now uh, what's going to happen is every time we do something, every time we use an auto attack or we cast a spell, uh, it's all going to be from the same script, from the same base script. So this is pretty much the same concept we have pretty much everywhere with our uh, systems, like base combat or base mutter. But this time we use a base spell. And we are going to open it up and start writing a little bit of stuff in there. So base spell is pretty much going to be uh, just any kind of spell container. So whenever we do a toe attacks, that's going to be considered as a spell. Or if you prefer an ability. And uh, if we cast some kind of magic stuff that does AoE damage, then it's also considered as a spell. So um, let's get started writing some floats up here. So let's go with a producted float last cast and it's going to go along with another product of float that I'm going to call cooldown so every spell is going to have a cooldown including auto attack so you can't just spam the button you're going to have to wait say 0.5 seconds in between each attack so with that being said we are going to create ourselves some virtual function that every spell is going to uh, implement public virtual void cast, no sorry not implement but they are going to inherit from it and if we need to overwrite them then we can. So the first one public virtual void cast and uh, we're going to leave it blank for now we're just gonna go ahead and keep writing our stuff and this one is going to be a public virtual bool that we'll call requirement so are we are we allowed to cast this spell right now? Is the cooldown ready or do we have enough mana? Do we have enough um, whatever resources we need to cast this spell? And then public virtual void. Actually, we could make this one abstract, but I'll just leave it virtual for now. This one is going to be implemented in every single of our spell. It's going to be called action. And this is where all the uh, logic of the spell is going to happen very well so let's just fill these so what's going to happen whenever we uh, call this function cast we should do if requirement because requirement is uh, returning a bool so if we do not match the requirement then we simply do return let's proceed and um, if the requirement are met then we just do action so we cast the spell we do the logic and then we're going to do last cast is equal to time that time very well now let's go ahead and call it the requirement we're going to do return through if everything is met and above that we're going to check if uh, we have enough mana or if the cooldown is ready so let's start with the cooldown if time dot time minus last cast is smaller or equal to cooldown and oh little mistake here if it is smaller than cooldown, then we are not ready to cast our spell just yet, so we'll do a return false. And that's pretty much going to be it, and that's where the action is going to be different for every single spell. So I'll just do a debug.log, and we'll do casting, actually we'll do, um, we'll do this to string, plus, so the name of the script does not implement action just like this of course we don't need to put this in there we just need to implement all the spells now that being said we need some kind of spell to test that out so we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a auto attack spell a melee auto attack spell so let's right click on spell create new C sharp script and we'll call this one melee attack spell open it up and in here we're gonna make sure that we inherit from that base spell just like this clean it up like we always do and we are going to declare some stuff uh, really specific to the melee auto attack so 
I'll go ahead and start with a float that I call hit length. So at which distance can we hit uh, the people or the enemies? And then private transform hit origin. That's just just going to be the uh, player transform. And I'll also use a private layer mask target mask. And I'll explain what it does in a moment. But let's go ahead and create the constructor for that. So melee attack spell. Whenever we create that melee uh, attack spell, this is going to be called because this is a constructor. So we're going to do a add component and this is going to uh, be called the moment the game starts, pretty much. So um, let's do cooldown is equal to say 0 0.5. Last cast is equal to time dot time minus cooldown. That's just to reset it uh, at the very beginning. And then hit length is going to be equal, say, we're going to hit people 3 meters in front of us, or actually um, around us. And then we're going to do hit origin is equal to transform. Then again, you'll understand what I'm doing in a moment. And let's do target mask is equal to um, layer mask dot. We don't have a mask just yet. Uh, so let's go ahead, just take a little break from that. Let's go ahead and create ourselves a layer mask for our enemies. So over here in our folder, in our project folder, you're going to open the prefab folder, then go inside of enemy and boss. Now there is a default uh, layer on here, but we're, we're going to change that. We're going to do a new layer. So hit add new layer, and in the first field you can write in, we'll do a layer called enemy. Okay. Now let's go back inside our enemy and choose that very layer that we just created. Same thing for the boss, so change the layer from default to enemy. And now we can use that in here. So target mask is going to equal layer mask dot get mask and we'll do enemy. Oh. Make sure you write it the same exact way as you wrote it inside the uh, the inspector. Okay, so that's the that's all the fields we need for our auto attack spells. Now we're gonna go ahead and override the action. So public override void action, and in there, what we're gonna need is um, if we go back to our logic, we have the base combat over here. So in order to do damage to someone, or well, to in order to do damage to someone that uh, uses the base combat spell, which is pretty much any enemy, then we need to call the on damage function with the damage info as a parameter. To do that, we'll use the send message function. Let's go ahead and declare ourselves our damage info structure. So damage info damage is going to equal new damage info. Uh, right now it's just it's a little bit messy, but we're going to clean it up a little bit later on when we have more information we can put so for now let's just leave it um, like this, something like that. So we declare our new damage info structure, or I mean class, and then we change the damage manually over here. So damage.amount is equal to say 5. If we go back to our base combat, we can tell that pretty much everybody inherits from uh, this value here, hit point, and we put it default 10. So in two hits we're going to be able to um, kill the enemy. Of course we're, we can have a dice modifier over here, we can have some random number generator, all that kind of good stuff, but we're gonna keep it simple for now and we'll expand on it when we're done with um, most of the basic stuff. Okay, so now we have our damage structure, but, but we, we can't really apply that very... Uh, well, well, we can't call everybody's everybody's on damage function. We need to select which one which of the enemy are going to be hit. To do that we'll use a function that is called overlap sphere. So let's do it for each first. So for each collider C in and this is it. Oh, collider C in physics dot overlap spheres and over here if we check out what it says, it says it's going to return an array of colliders and in the documentation it says that um, you pretty much take a sphere, put it on a certain position in the world, you define its radius, and everybody inside of that sphere is going to be, is going to be returned um, 
in this function. So let's do collider C in physic over that sphere, and then we give it a position. So hit origin is going to be our position. Hit origin dot position, and then a radius that is our hit length. Oops, hit length, and then we need. Well, we don't need to, but we're going to give it a layer mask. And you're going to understand why I did that in a moment. So just give it the target mask for now. And then we just oh, we close this off. New line. And let's talk about our layer mask a bit. So um, say we were to just use this function without layer mask then we would be putting a sphere on top of the player and it would grab more than just enemies. It would grab, say, the floor. It would grab the tower next to you. It would grab pretty much anything that has a collider around the player. And we don't really want that. We only want to be able to affect enemies. Okay, now we know that everybody that is selected in that for each is going to have the layer mask um, enemy on top of it. So we can simply do C dot send message and we're going to call on damage and then we give it the damage info um, value we have. So that's pretty much all we need to do for our spell. Now of course we, had, we don't really have any way to test it out yet because our player does not know that he's able to toe attack and we don't have any kind of inputs um, to trigger that. So what we'll do just before we end this video is um, we'll actually create ourselves not create, but we're going to go ahead and code a little bit of our player combat uh, script. So open up the player combat and we are going to um, create a spellbook. Okay, so let's go ahead and declare ourselves a private list. We're going to need to include the um, system.collection.generics so we create ourselves a private list of a base spell and we're going to call this say spellbook just like this let's make sure we initialize it as well and we are going to um, I think we have a start function in our base combat let's just go take a look yeah initialize function uh, I mean I mean initialize combat which is being called from the start so we're going to override that we'll do public override initialize combat let's leave the base init combat in there and then um, we choose which ability abilities I don't know how to write English my bad choose which ability um, our player will inherit from I mean will will own and the first one is going to be spellbook dot add and we're going to add the game object dot add component melee attack spell and we're going to cast it as a base uh, base spell so that's our first line that's our first um, ability of course if we want to add more we just simply duplicate this line and change the type for say um, super earthquake blast or whatever we're going to have in the future good so now we just created that um, if we hit play just to see what's, what what happens in our game pose it and then as you can see actually we can't see because we don't have the player combat on it let's put the player combat hit play and as you can see now the melee auto attack spell is is now there it's on top of our player okay now we need to find a way to call the action you remember if you remember correctly well, not the action, but the um, the what is it called already? It's called cast. We need to find a way to call this um, this function. To do that, we are going to filter some inputs. So, private void update, and let's do if input. Of course, this is just for testing. But if input dot get mouse button down we're gonna use the mouse button the left click so uh, zero if we hit the left click then let's do spellbook add the index zero so the first spell in our spell list dot cast okay now let's go back 
hit play again and I am spamming my left click right now. Nothing happens because we don't have any enemies. Now say I spawn enemies and I just go next to them. Uh, it says send message on damage has no receiver but we do get the enemies so we do target them properly. Now let's double click on that and look at why we don't have um, any receiver. So we try to call it send message but it looks like they don't have this function, the on damage function. Now since on damage is being defined in the base combat and um, I'm pretty sure that yeah, AI combat inherit from that, then maybe our problem is that they don't have the base combat, which they don't. Okay, so the problem is over here where we do not have any kind of uh, combat or base combat script on top of our enemy, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to select enemy, drag and drop the AI combat on top of it. Same thing for the boss, and this is pretty much it. Now let's hit play again, test this out. I'm gonna spawn the wave and go next to them and do left click and it says enemy clone has died so they're dying and their HP is going down and they're just yeah they're dying so it works now say we do something for this uh, condition instead of doing on death we'll do uh, we'll call their actual death function and we'll remove them from the map so inside of AI combat we're going to override, so public override, the on death function and we're simply going to say spell manager dot um, we have a function that we've made that destroys the object or I mean despawn the, uh, the enemy so spell manager dot instance and we'll do destroy enemy and we'll give it the uh, this game object so we're destroying this very game object so let's save this and try it out in game. Now hit play, spawn the wave. And we're gonna go close to an enemy. Do a few auto attacks, and here you go. They are now gone. Good, so that pretty much concludes this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful to you, please leave it a like. If you have any question or comment, please leave a comment in the section below. Also, subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.